hair today. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Me too. Oh, you did? Just kidding. This is going to be so bad. I'm going to be the worst at this. <laughs> well, on that note, welcome to the Edge of Chaos podcast. This is the real experiment. The title's coming to full flush. We have here uh, a bunch of educators, and we're just going to shoot it straight from the hip wherever that takes us. So um, let's just jump in right to the first topic. Let's just cut to the chase. No fluff. Brett, oh boy. why don't you drop Jesus. your topic? Maybe I should b- back up. Here's what we're going to do. We're each going to have a topic. We have not shared or discussed them unless uh, your name is Nikki. Um, and Insecure. we're going to have a conversation. And we're just going to bounce around so that we are not prepared for what everybody has brought to the table today. So we're going to start off with the man that hangs out in left field. Brett, what do you got? And this is going to be crazy. I, I feel like I went too deep Shocking. with this. I'm not, I'm, I really wasn't <laughs> trying to, but okay. So the, the thing that just driving me nuts right now, and it's, this is a, okay. So I'm sorry. Brett is brains, really in his <laughs> element right now. Has I anybody feel like, noticed this? I seriously just, like this is Brett's, this is where you are. Uh, this is where life. I want to be. Yeah. This is good. I'm sorry. No. I, okay. So this has to do with like dual consciousness. <laughs> it's, it is just, maybe it's too deep. But there's, there's like these studies that people have done where when people have like the middle of their brain damaged, and so you've got a right and a left brain, and your left brain is what verbally communicates everything, and, and you've got each side is controlling uh, one side of your body, essentially. Can you make like a graphic organizer for this? I could, and I could, I could separate it out. But here, here's what it is. When they've done studies for people who have like damage in the middle of their brain, they find that each, of, each half of their body reacts differently to different cues so like they'll show somebody something with their right eye and something with their left eye and they'll say draw it and each hand draws something different or they'll ask them are you a are you a christian or are you an atheist and each hand will write out different answers because there is no longer communication between the right and the left side and and it's basically leading to the conclusion that there is like a suppressed right consciousness in your brain and then in the left side of your brain, which is the verbal you that, that we all know and, and can hear, that that side of your brain is actually just communicating for your entire body and, and just basically doing everything that is you, but that there's this, also this part that's like hidden and unearthed. And so there's like videos of people who, uh, this is, these are specific cases where it's, it's damaged and so they're separated. Like they'll pick up like a protein bar on their other hand, they'll hit it out of their, <laughs> out of their hand. Or like they'll be talking to someone and they'll just like reach into somebody else's purse and grab something out, or they'll like start unbuttoning their shirt as they're having a conversation. It's there's so this like is this. This is the drunk you. This it could be, and this it, is it the, could be. Half of you is drunk all the time, and the other half is who you are when you're sober. And, and I mean that would be like an explanation. Or would that, it be like people who have Alzheimer's when they finally get to that deeper level of Alzheimer's? Is that the other conscious that reveals like sometimes? You have someone who's like been nice all the years, and when they get to that level, they come really really mean. mean. They do get mean. Or maybe it's who you are the whole time. What? Maybe it's really who you are. Like that a hole of a person is. But if you're dual conscious, which one's the real you? And that's the thing. Like you think of like the the devil and the angel comparison. Yeah. And I I think that that's the reference that comes up is that there's like this part of you that that wants to communicate. And then there's this party that gets to communicate and gets to have all that interaction. And it it just messes with my head because, I mean, there's parts of it that make sense. And there's no parts intended, of it that but it's kind of mind-blowing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's that's kind of where I'm at. And it, I don't know. Uh, we've been talking about consciousness in class and I just, I don't know. It's, uh, just really hung up on it. Yeah, and I'm, I'm so hung up on it. And there's just, there's all these little, I don't know. I don't want to get into like a... a I'm just talking the whole time. There's just so many crazy things with consciousness that that I can't even fathom. And I don't know. It just blows my mind. So do you just want to talk about the possibility of it? Is that your... I think you just as yeah, mind blows. It's just Tuesday like like thoughts. thoughts. What do we yeah. think of it? Yeah. Um, I think that from this point on, I will be blaming everything bad I do on my other part of my brain. And I'm going to say I have some type of injury. Well, that's fine. <laughs> you think I'll get that's away with it? <laughs> I feel like that was the class consensus. I think I'll be able to. <laughs> that was all. That's what the kids said. I heard no, the kids. Well, I'm a, then I'm a 12-year-old at heart. <laughs> a mean 12-year-old at heart. 
you know, that's that. And then, you know, some of blamed it on, like, oh, well, you know. So does that happen based on, like, you get, like, a like an injury? Like a brain injury that leads to this? Or just yeah, you wake up one day injuries. with dual? Well, or? they used to do surgery to cure, to treat epilepsy. And they'd, like, cut that part of your brain. It's, yeah, I'm not going to get into medical terminology, but they yeah, cut the part the, of your brain. Uh, it's the corpus callosum. Okay, thank you. They, there you go. They cut it to, so that if you have seizures or whatever, it will only be on one side of your body. So it takes some of the stress off of the body. I'm glad the medical professionals have entered into the conversation. Yep. Just he was that. Googling it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I, well, <laughs> I had the phone, but in my head I was like, that's corpus callosum, right? And I looked it up real quick to be sure, and yeah, that's, that's what it is. And so, like, it also, though, when it's severed, they talk about alien hand syndrome because yeah. your hand does whatever it wants. Like, you don't control it all the time. So a movie. Yeah, remember the comedy, like, where There's the guy's like one hand, movie. like, from the 90s? And he, like, keeps trying to kill people. Uh, I do remember that. It's, it like, was, a really uh, bad 90s movie. Like the Adams family, with idle hands. hands. Yeah, idle hands. Idle hands. That is it. Yeah, yeah. I, that used used, used to terrify me. Thing. Thanks for putting me into remission. <laughs> oh, losers! But no, that's that's all I have. It's heavy. That is I, heavy. I, maybe it's I went a heavy topic today. today. It is heavy. Okay. Yeah. I'm Since your it. topic's so heavy, I should probably just drop mine. Since mine's even deeper, just drop it. Oh Jesus! Mine is a question, and mine is: when you write something with a pencil, and then you erase it, where does it go? Okay. Oh my God. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> what? Um, no, this is actually, this is a cool, uh, there's actually a good relation here to deleted files on the computer and how when you like delete files on a computer, where do they, because we don't really think about it, you know, but there's they space there. They go to the trash bin. And they, yeah, and <laughs> right. they cover them. <laughs> but what is the trash, I mean, it's not like they like shoot out a little puff of gas in the back of your phone. Like they Are don't just sure? disappear into nothing. And I think... I don't know, there's probably a little, because you overwrite it, they get reallocated to different, uh, so when you delete something, it just gets rewritten. But that's different than a way. pencil and an eraser. I mean, like, there's like no. Like, I had a tangible idea that was visual, and this little pink eraser, like. Just, I know. Well, well, I think well isn't the imprint still there? Don't they do that in, like, forensic science? and can take something you wrote on and erase everything off and they can bring all the writing back just based off the imprint so from the pressure. Erasing it at a visible level. Right. Yeah, no. But it's still You there. can never erase the ideas in your mind. Oh Aaron. my god, that is beautiful. But what if you get a head injury like the one he's talking about? Oh, well then, about? Oh, geez. then, then you're right anything. Anything. You're screwed. Then you're right in. Then you got two hands writing two different things. I have a theory about what Are you talking like at a physical level or are you talking like at an idea or just in general? Just Maybe in general. Wasn't. Like I was blown away by the idea uh, you write like you see it like I first thought it was physical like you have this little like scraps of eraser but like can you reassemble can you remorph so I guess it applies to like digital files like can you like put go. the pieces of lead back into the exact same pl place is that what you mean I don't know like is it gone is it always gone I think it goes to have anybody seen inside out you guys yes. the Pixar no. movie? Yes. Sorry, I had a moment. Yes. I can't <laughs> wait to see what this Condescension, 100 so, so good that you guys cannot see my eyes on this. Yeah. Well, we, oh, we actually can't. Eyes, <laughs> oh, you yeah, guys actually rolling across the table right now, yeah, if geez. anybody is curious. Okay, so in Inside Out, if a memory, like, isn't important, like, the memories we forget, they go just to this, like, database. And there are little workers in Inside Out that store the memories and like they're not important and sometimes they have to be cleaned they're like out and then marbles. they're just then they're, they're like little marbles and then they're just erased forever and like the imaginary friend is in Inside Out and he's trying not to be like fully erased mm -hmm. so I wonder if just like in our brains because Inside Out is totally nonfiction just to double check based on a true story true story yeah, of my completely. life when I was a child yeah. so I, maybe there's just like some database where all the little eraser pencil pieces go and. It's never really gone. Hmm. That was deep. Drop that one into the deep end. Yeah, that was definitely just as heavy. <laughs> hey, well, uh, Nikki's goes even heavier. Mine's not even heavier. <laughs> I'm, I'm really terrified of what um, I put on the table. Do, are we moving on? <laughs> yeah. Let's All just, right. No, I, I, okay, I so I'm going to move on to mine because I had a lot of time to think this weekend. <laughs> Um, I, well, I stood in line for two and a half hours for the opportunity to purchase a single bottle of beer. Um, I went to Proprietor's Day in um, Chicago at Goose Island, and I was baffled, would be the word, at the thought of waiting in line for two and a half hours for something. 
and I started to think about it, and I'm not going to lie, I bounced it around with Brett a little bit, and I kind of was questioning, would you wait for two and a half hours just for this experience? And that got me thinking about what would you guys do? Would you Have you ever waited in line for something that long, and would you or why would you? Yeah, so this summer when we went to Chicago with the Wyckoffs, we waited for like two and a half hours to eat at that pizza place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, I would say it was well worth the wait, but while we were waiting, we were like, there's no way this is going to live up I was to pretty sure I was gonna what die. it was going to be. Yeah. But yeah, it was super worth it. The pizza was delicious. The experience of the restaurant was really cool, mm-hmm. so... I didn't mind once we were there, but definitely standing in line. And I was standing in line. We were, like, sitting on the ground outside because there were no chairs or anything. And we've been walking around Chicago all day. I looked like I'd been through hell and back. Like, I looked like I was dead. And they don't, like keep, at that restaurant, they don't take a waiting list. The manager goes by sight. That's, like, their thing. So, like, you hope to God he doesn't forget you and just realizes after, like, two hours that, oh, yeah, you guys have been here for a while. You can come in now. Mm-hmm. So that was interesting, but I thought it was worth the wait because the product was good and, you know, it was a good time, but I don't know if I would do it again. I'm just not a, I'm not a line waiter. So I I feel like I was just, I was socially thinking about what I was doing as I was standing there, just following these people to do this. It's like such a follower mentality. And I was just very thrown off by the fact that there's, I mean, I think there's probably 1000 people waiting to do this and it just seems so bizarre to me why 1,000 people are waiting and I think the windshield is 22 degrees and not only to get not a free bottle of beer but to have the opportunity to purchase a bottle of beer and I know there's more to it like the cultural and everything that that goes with like craft beer and Chicago but it's such an interesting concept when you really think about it but do you have to like technically be in line you have to be in line I mean but for your question like do I actually have to be in line or is it like Waiting, like, I, I think, like, like, is it like waiting? Like, we waited for four hours to see Drake, even though I wasn't in a line, or is it like in a line, I like, think waiting for a physically roller coaster? waiting in line is a different animal than waiting for four hours to see a concert when you're sitting in your chair. Or, I've sat before on my computer and waited for tickets to post so I can buy them really quickly. There's something different about the fact that I stood there with a like thousand other people, standing, like yes. a part of a, I mean, it's not like a movement, but it was very interesting to me to look you were a part of a culture of people that believe right. in the same thing that all looks exactly the same um i think i've waited in line on for roller coasters that. that's probably the only thing i've actually waited in line to be like for like the dragster at cedar point when it opened we want to be the first people on right like, we waited in a turnstile line i think literally almost three three and a half but hours. don't i mean half, black Friday. there's so I'm many mixed say, feelings when you're Friday. waiting in line like there's I like anticipation, this, there's excitement, there's like, why in the hell am I even doing this? Yeah, there's an anger. There's, there's, a, there's there is a, a great deal like, of anger. Be great. Yeah. yeah. There's, a, there's a psychology to it. And there's also uh, one of the podcasts, she brought it up. It just, it, it's crazy how people value things also based on the weight. Because it does add to the, the weighting aspect of it. And when uh, the podcast I, that I was listening to was talking about probably the same pizza place you were talking about. And they went through the line and they were talking to people like, uh, how much would you pay to jump line? I mean, you can't do it. There's, like, uh, etiquette and people get mad and they'd stop you or whatever. But, like, if you could go, these are people who are, like, 40 minutes out. Like, if you could go right to the front, how much would you pay for this slice of pizza? And it was, like, you know, normally it's, like, 7 bucks. And they're, like, oh, I'd, he's, like, would you pay 18 20 25 And, like, there were people, just to save time, there were people who were, like, going as high as, like, $25 for one slice of pizza just to you know, just to to cut that time. It's kind of like Disney with the fast pass yeah. now. Like mm-hmm. you pay that extra money to not yeah. have to wait in line. Like they're banking on you not wanting to be miserable. But that demand, the demand aspect of it, it plays into the psychology of like. And that definitely played into what we were doing. Yeah. So it was like a limited release batch of beer. It only comes out on Black Friday, and the people who want, I had to win a lottery just to attend this event. Um, it's a limited batch and we're getting it like a week early. Right. So it's, I mean, but still like being in a line is such a part of like your entire life. I mean, from the beginning of school, you're taught how to be in a line. And like you said, like the social mm-hmm. norms and regulations of not cutting yeah. it, it just like, for some reason I could not like wrap my head around it, why I was doing this. Cause I'm just not, a, I'm not that type of person. I would never do black Friday. I would never do any of but that. They, made, they rigged it to make you feel important. Like you won this lottery, right. you're special. To come be miserable and hopefully yeah. maybe talk about how miserable waiting in line for three hours is, and it's 
It's free advertising. It's like a bonding. It's free really advertising. Also. It brought us together, <laughs> though. No, no, you you know start what's... to bond as a line. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah, you become, yeah, it, yeah. it's like uh, this bonding experience, and all of a sudden, you just feel <laughs> like, this is just like we're family. Yeah. Like, we're waiting together to do this. you go this. your separate ways and never. And I'll never see those people again, but what an intriguing concept, even as an adult now, that that's, like, something that came back into my life. And I guess I've, I think maybe once or twice waited to be, like, in a general admission seat in a show. But maybe I care more about music, so maybe that's why it felt different for me, where this felt more like a chore. Like, I, I just didn't understand. Well, and there's, there's like, a, there actually is a kind of a positive look on how people act when they're, I mean, we think of like cutting as, like, a horrible thing. One of the other experiments that they did was they had people, uh, this was, like, a line where it took, like, 30 minutes to get food or something. And they'd have somebody come up and say, hey, can I just, and this was the second person in line, hey, can I just go real fast? I'm in a hurry. I'll, I'll give you 10 bucks. And the person there would, generally speaking, say, give them the benefit of the doubt. No, I don't need your money, you know, and just fill in the blank in their head. Hey, they're probably here for a good reason. But if you did it the next day for even more money, like, hey, hey, I need in here real fast, here's $20, then they'd refuse. And so, like, just, I mean, they give people the benefit of the doubt. Like, it, it's weird to think that, because cutting has such a horrible connotation, <laughs> but you also fill in the gaps for what that person's rationale is for doing it. And, I mean, a lot of times they'll give people and think, oh, you know, you they've got to get yeah. somewhere, their wife's pregnant, or, you know, whatever. You see, like, in the, in the pit section of, like, Dave Matthew concerts, people, they get, girls always get away with it, but guys try to, they always get blocked. They're like, oh, my girlfriend's up there. And the guy will never get through. Even if his girlfriend mm -hmm. is, he's probably the one that went to go get stuff for the girlfriend in the first place. No one ever believes him. But a girl's like, my boyfriend's up there. It's like, oh, well, oh yeah, okay. okay. Like, oh, she, she really and, needs to get And through. then you see, yeah. <laughs> but it's interesting, that whole, like, you know, fool me once. Or if you're the first guy to blast through the electric, but if you're, like, the 20th guy to try to get in front, like, you, it's, I, now you said that, it makes me think, like, I remember, like, we formed, like, a wall. Like, yeah. we, like, like locked team. our arms. Yeah. Like, no one's getting well, through. You even think of driving, too. Like, the, the lane switching, you know, when you're in line in construction. Oh, and how people will, people like, don't get want over a zipper. and block. Yeah. 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 It is like yeah, you build those alliances for out of necessity. That's funny. Yeah, so there's my uh, there's my piece today. That was a deep thought. Well, thank you. More props to you. Thank solid. you. Thank you. I think we all learned something. There. Yeah. Everybody, <laughs> what am I this week? What I've got is going to take me a minute to explain. I think. <laughs> oh <my> God. <laughs> okay. and Here I, we go. <laughs> I explained it. I asked this question one time when we were driving to a conference. It was like Barnes and Burke and me, and so we're in this car and we're just playing like. Um, would you rather type of things appropriately <laughs> you were playing would you rather while we I were driving. I didn't know there was an uh, appropriate way to play. Okay, and I came up with a would you rather, and I can't remember how I exactly worded it, but it made all of us go like, oh my God, like what, what would I do? Okay, so my idea is like, would you rather do something that was important in some way, but maybe not like crazy world changing, and everyone know that you did that? and helped someone or a few people like everybody would know or would you rather do something that could totally change the world like end like poverty for everybody end world hunger create world peace completely like something ginormous you were totally responsible for it but no one ever know you existed and you were responsible for it because i feel that as a people like especially teachers i think that we like to be recognized recognized for what we do for sure even if it's something small and it takes a staff so far. And I know this isn't necessarily education related, but even just as people, I think that we like the recognition. So I'm asking, would you rather do something that's like, eh, kind of important, whatever, like not going to be a huge deal. Everybody know that you had a part in helping with that. Or would you like bite the bullet, do something totally world changing, completely change the world for the better, but no one ever know you had any part of it. You get zero recognition for it. Well, there's a socially acceptable answer here. And there's I want to know the real But, I mean, honestly, if you ask that question, you're, I bet you 99% of the time they're like, oh, yeah, I would definitely, you know, want to. I would want recognition. I just. For sure. So I don't know what I would I, do. I just mean, like, the socially acceptable answer that everyone's going to say right. is that you're going to do the thing that's going to change yeah. the world in a drastic way and have nobody know. I mean, that's right. what any normal person on the street would probably. Well, but what do you four hooligans say? I. <clears throat> I, you know, and I, I, you want to hope that if you're given that choice and <laughs> you've got to make a decision that, you know, you'd lean towards the non-recognition. At least I, there's a personal part of me that wants to say that I'd lean towards that. But I think that there's also a power that can come from the recognition that you get. 
So you do something and you get recognition. I think there's a power to that too. And I think you could enact continuous things from there. And I, so, I mean, it's not like it's all blind or not. You know, I, I think that there's also a power that comes from the awareness that you'd get. I think I'm going to have my corpus column severed and I'm going to have part of my brain take the recognition and the other part of my brain solve the world. I would probably do it for recognition in the hopes that it would lead to maybe something greater that would help. And I guess it also depends on but how I wouldn't know what, great what that it is. Important, I mean, well, that's what I'm saying. It's hard for me to say without me knowing what my important thing I'm being recognized for. Okay, here. Let's say you stop like a shooter and you save somebody's life in the school it's somewhere you don't have to bring it to the school but somewhere you always got to take it so (laughs) you like stop a shooter save like maybe a small group of people's lives and everybody will know like you'll be a hero but you could do something that would stop anyone from ever getting shot again maybe some like type Mm, of technology Like, that truly would okay. impact someone's that life. That would be motivating enough for me to definitely take the, the high road and stop yeah. it forever. And never, and I mean, not get any like recognition. What comes first, the it chicken or the egg? Yeah, yeah. right. Guns. What? <laughs> no, but yeah, that does show that depending on what the situation is, that answer can vary greatly. Like, if I'm going to fork in a road, then obviously you would pick the technology that would prevent me from being in a situation where I'd have to take a bullet for someone. Yeah. You never get recognized for it. Like years and years and years Do later, you get paid for it. No, oh. saving thousands. Of I would say you <laughs> you get zero for it. There I don't know, the but that, that also benefits me. Like that that example is like like you said, that's gonna save. It could put me in a position, a better position for the rest of my life. So in the long run, I'm making myself safer and those that I care about safer. So that would be enough. And like you're sitting around at your dining room table, and like your husband's like. Did you see this new technology that stops people? And you're like, well, but you also interesting. Isn't that like sometimes the, it's not always like, good either. What's that? Like the technology might not be all, like you create a technology that stops people, but then there could also be like a side. Normally with those things, there's a side of it that also oh, could yeah. potentially lead to darker paths. You, you, you can't it. black mirror my. You basically ask me like, to be like, my, like, like my a real question. world superhero. Huh? So you basically ask me to be like a real world superhero because yeah, no one ever gets to know that you are. Who you are? Mm-hmm. Then there'd be no more. There'd, be, there'd still be that's weapons. Well, there'd still be. Still. Yeah, that's true. If we got into the whole gun question, there's to be. There's a show on AMC that I can't remember what it is. It used to come after her, Better Call Saul, where it like goes back into time and there's mm-hmm. no guns. There's only like hand to hand combat. Bad, into the bad lane. Yes, that's it. Coming. I don't. I only watched like half of it. Just, Sorry, I couldn't even remember the name. So clearly, one, it didn't so. do that much for me. But regardless, that's one of the selling. That's like one of the advertising points of the show is that there's no longer any like. There's only hand-to-hand combat, so it's interesting to think about because there's still so much violence and so much death. So that's true. That question always like we, boggles my mind. We over, uh, we over like uh, romanticize the past a lot of times too. I agree think with of that. it as, oh, those were better times. Well, how and, romanticized yeah. is it? You didn't get to bathe, but once like every six months. Yeah. Oh, what a great time! Or that you know a third of the world's population was dying of horrible diseases, yeah. like great times. Like yellow fever. Remember that book? Oh. What was that, 1963? I don't even remember. Wait, 1690? I don't remember what it's called. It, it was crazy must be a good one. Huh? It was a it's real good one. Yeah, it's, it's really awesome. really latched onto the... <laughs> yeah, I mean... Latched into the memory. <laughs> it really stuck with me, obviously. <laughs> you, got a, you got an idea before we yeah. wrap to a close? Yeah, sure. So, this yesterday, uh, Angela and I go to Best Buy to look at laptops. Because ours is on the outs. So we're looking at getting a MacBook for the first time because apparently that's the way to go. So we're talking to this guy in the store, and he's, like, really pumping up Mac. He's had his Mac for six years. My brother's had a Mac for six years. Like, you don't have problems with those. And I was like, you know, it seems like viruses don't happen very often with Mac. And he was like, yeah, that's true, but Mac has their own system, and everybody else runs on the same thing. And he was like, so if I'm making a virus, who am I going to go after? Mac? Mac? or everybody else. And right when he said that in my head, I was like, oh my God, Max, the one creating the viruses that destroys everybody else. And so I just wanted to know, what do you, what do you think? Is it a possibility, one, how much of a possibility? Is there a team at Mac that creates viruses to destroy everything else out there? And two, do you think it's ethical or not? You love a good conspiracy. <laughs> oh, I would, uh... I thought you were gonna say, I just wanna know. <laughs> 
Are you guys out there? <laughs> Matt, or that. Matt, Matt. If you, if you this, are you listening? Give me a Matt. Give me a, give me a virus. Sing into the comments there. I thought he was going to go into like a mic drop, and if anybody listening has any coupons, <laughs> I'll take your coupons. <laughs> yeah, that, that too. And Matt, Matt, we're also blackmailing you for a new laptop. There's that too. But right away in the story, that's what, like, we're talking to this guy, and then I just went to another place. And like, Mac is, Mac has a team that creates viruses to destroy everything else. If